Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Lyle and this is WNBA Weekly. It's been a pretty exciting week in the league. Tina Charles continues to play great basketball. She has another double-double, 25 points, 10 rebounds. And Courtney Paris had a double-double as well, 12 points and a career-high 16 rebounds. Skylar Diggins led the way with 21.7 assists as the Shock win their second straight game. Then Washington, they had no answer as all five Mercury starters scored in double figures, led by 20 points from Garner and a double-double from Tarasi, who had 13 points and 10 assists. And then the sky was shorthanded. Deladon and Breland both sat out, and the storm wouldn't control the whole way. Uh, behind Gatling, she had a first career double double with 15 points and 10 rebounds. The sky, they made a comeback attempt, but they fell just short. And Chicago has now lost three straight games, while the storm has won their second in a row. Then on Wednesday, the Storm were in control for the majority of the game, but behind an Alana Larkins double-double, 17 points and 11 rebounds, the Fever were able to mount a fourth quarter comeback and win impressively. Then on Thursday, the Mercury had four started scoring double figures, led by a Kansas Dupree double-double, 21 points, 10 rebounds, but but the Connecticut Sun had all of their starters scoring in double figures, including a Janae double-double with 13 points, 10 rebounds, and led by Alex Bentley with 22 points, 5 assists. The Sun were able to hold on, hang on for the one-point win. So after all that, here are the current standings. So as always, this weekend in the league is going to be a relatively busy one. Here are a few games that you can look forward to. On Friday, you've got Chicago at Washington, the two teams with the longest losing streaks in the Eastern Conference going head-to-head, -head, both of them trying to get back on track. Chicago, they lost two very tough games to two really great teams, and then the third one, they were missing their stars. I mean, I'm not worried at all about Chicago. They're struggling right now, but once they're back to 100%, I think they'll fight back into that number one seed. Then you've got Connecticut and New York, the two worst teams in the Eastern Conference, are going head-to-head, -head, trying to climb out of the basement and avoid a lottery pick. I mean, in all honesty, Connecticut is playing better than I expected. I have no idea what's wrong with New York. They've got a great head coach and a talented roster. For some reason, they're just not winning. Then you've got Minnesota at Atlanta, a finals rematch from last year. Uh, they're both the number one seeds right now. It's their first time meeting this year. It's, this should be fun to watch. Just if you get a chance to check it out, you really should. It's going to be an interesting game. Then you got Seattle at San Antonio, the battle of the Hall of Famers as veteran point guard Sue Bird and Becky Hammond square off. And this should be a fun game. They're both under 500. But they've still got talented rosters, plenty of playoff potential, and it's their first meeting of the season, so it'll just be interesting to see how it pans out. Then you've got Los Angeles at Tulsa. Tulsa, they've won two straight games, both of them at home. This game is at home as well. And even though Candace Park is the reigning MVP, the Sparks have had an up and down season. Tulsa, they're playing very well, and they should be able to match up well against them. Uh, Glory Johnson, she can be a monster when she wants to. Uh, Courtney Paris has had a great season, not to mention the outstanding guard play from Tulsa between Diggins and Sims. I mean, this game right now is pretty much a coin toss. Then on Saturday, you've only got one game, Los Angeles at San Antonio. San Antonio looking to avenge their loss earlier this season, while Los Angeles, if they win both of these games this weekend, they'll not only be above 500, but they'll be able to climb into third place. And not to mention that, especially in the Candace Parker era, they've matched up very well against San Antonio. Then on Sunday, we start off with New York at Connecticut. That game being played at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you know, it's hard to predict how it will turn out when two teams play each other consecutive nights. I mean, consecutive games. They play each other on Friday and then again on Sunday. So whatever I said from Friday, that probably still applies. Then you've got Phoenix at Minnesota. Phoenix, you know, they're coming off a tough loss, but they're still looking to try to climb up into first place. 
they'll be one step closer if they can hand Minnesota just their second loss of the season. So this will be a nice little battle to watch. Uh, and this game will be on ESPN2 at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 12 p.m. Central and 10 p.m. Pacific. I mean, if you get the chance, just check this game out. It should be fun to watch two of the top teams in the league going at it. Then you've got Atlanta at Washington, and if the playoffs were to start right now, this would be a first-round matchup. It's the first time they played this season, so it's hard to see how it pan out, how they'll match up with each other. But so far, Atlanta, they've played well and been able to climb back into the number one seed, while Washington, they've been struggling lately and falling down to number four. So, then you've got Seattle at Tulsa, and both of these teams in the basement right now, and they're out of the playoffs, the two worst teams in the Western Conference, fighting for a lottery pick. But both last time they played, Seattle barely managed to escape with a win. Both of these teams are playing even better than them, though. And me personally, I'm kind of hoping to see Tulsa have an undefeated weekend. Well, that's it for this edition of WNBA Weekly. This has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Now. Uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy these games. Don't forget to vote for your favorite players to go to the All-Star break. And I will see you again on Monday.